Hey, what's up, Scott Balkan, here with Imagination Creation Films, and today, well, we are talking about 11 things that filmmakers need to consider when shooting their films. My, my nose is number 11. Now, as the new year begins, it's time for many to reset many of the goals in their lives. And, well, in filmmaking, it's also a great time to reset your mindset. I know we all get caught up in, well, what's the best camera and what's the best lens and should we buy it? And well, it becomes all consuming to have the very best in the hopes that having the best will make us the best. And well, it's not exactly as clear as that. There are quite a few things that are far, far more important to your film than camera and lenses. And well, I'm gonna go through my list and well, in my order. And this is not absolute, but more of a guideline really. And I'd really like to know your order. What what order do you think these should be in, you know, and what do you think about them? Put your comments down below and let's have a conversation. Now, I will be doing a video showing and demonstrating these as examples in the near future, so look for that soon. All right, here are my picks in order of importance, and I'll explain a little bit of each as I go. Number one, story. Now, this may seem obvious, but, well, it does get lost in so many people's minds. If you don't have a great story, nothing, and I mean nothing, will help make it a better film. It can look stellar, sound immaculate, and have the best acting on the planet, and it's still gonna suck if the story sucks. Spend time honing that story. Talk to others, refine it, rewrite it. Do so much to help make that story as best as possible. Story is everything, start there. Number two, audio. Audiences can tolerate a lot of bad things in film, but bad audio, well, it can never be overcome. Make sure you are capturing your actors' and environments in the best possible way. Excess noise, clipping, too quiet, bad microphones, etc. all of these will destroy the feel of your film really, really quickly. Now, a little example, my Red Komodo unboxing last year, well, I had plugged the mic into the headphone jack on my camera and did a normal clap to make sure the auto was picked up, but I failed to thump the mic itself. I didn't catch it. And with an unboxing video, there's no honest way to redo it. And I was absolutely roasted for it in the comments. And well, rightly so. So check your sound and make it the best you can. Number three, acting. Well, this is rather simple. Acting can overcome looks in almost any film. Don't just choose your actors because of their looks, even if they perfectly match your vision. A bad performance will separate the audience from the story very quickly. Now, this is also a careful line to walk as well because well, there are poor actors and over actors. Both can adversely affect your vision. Cast the very best you can and make sure you direct the actors in a way that can extract the best performance as possible. Sometimes that's letting them run with it. Other times it's sharing every feeling you have, but rarely should you ever give them the exact way to say a line. Allow them to be the character. This leads to number four, directing. And speaking of directing, it's a great time for me to direct you to thumbs up and well, also click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Now, the director really sets the tone for the film. The director sets the overall feeling for the film and sets the overall vision for the film. So much of this work is done before day one of shooting even begins. A good director will have great people skills and, well, great people working for them. You are working not only with actors, but support crew as well. Having people skills will only serve you better and ultimately make the film better and a better place to work which makes the film better. A good director will also be collaborative. You shouldn't exist in a vacuum. Talking and working with their art director, DP, colorist, editor, writer, etc. All of these throughout the entire process will help make your film the best it can be. Number five, editors. Mm -hmm. A great editor will make their story flow far better and help to serve that story in ways you well, may not have ever thought of. Trimming a single frame from a scene could make the difference in how that scene is felt. A good editor will help it make it be the best that it can be. Many times, editors are solving problems you well, never knew that you had until, well, after everything is shot. So don't skimp here. Number six, 
set design, set decoration, art director, art department. This is another place where you should be spending time and money to help make your film the best it can be. Unless your film consists of a white room with nothing in it, every single thing placed in your room will serve your story, if it should serve your story. If your character lives in a chaotic life of a mess, and, and their house is a mess, their brain is a mess, well, their home should resemble that. You can't just film in a friend's clean house. It needs to look like the character. If your film is a period piece, well, you need to make sure that your set deck resembles that era. It's the little things here that can help make your film better. Number seven, sound design and music. Well, really these are two that can be separated, but I combined them because I feel like it. They are very much close to each other, although I'd probably slightly edge out sound design over music. Now, sound design is, well, it's massively overlooked in part of films. The sound in a movie can be 30 to 40 layers deep, and each one is adding to the theme, the feel, the emotion, etc. Unless your film takes place in silence, space, um, sound design plays a huge part in your film. The best way to handle this, well, is look at each and every scene and look at the items that are in the scene. Find things that make noise and then add that noise into your mix into, well, the appropriate location for where it is. If it's on the right side, place it on the right side, that kind of thing. The more you have, the better. And then you can begin to bury those sounds in the back. The subtlety pays off here. Lack of sound design, well, it'll be instantly apparent. Music, well, is a, it's a leading character in a film. It can help transition, convey emotions, support feelings, and well, so much more. It's more than just a song here and there. Sometimes it can be a song theme that's spread throughout the entire film. But having music in your film supports your story far more than you think. Good music and sound simply gives you the feels and well, hopefully in all the right ways. Number eight, DP and lighting and camera movement. This is where your director, art director, and DP really come together as a team and define the visual look of the film. And it's important to light appropriately and, well, not make the scene look lit. Like sound design and music, lighting should not be noticed, but rather felt and sensed. Use practicals as starting points and, well, light from there. Everything should feel natural, unless the film requires it to feel unnatural. In addition, camera movement, well, it serves the character in the film in ways many don't consider. Again, if the character is a mess, make the camera feel like a mess. Handheld, moving in naturally, it adds to the overall feeling. If the character is graceful, maybe the camera only flows and swoops. If the film is suspenseful and well, we're always afraid something's going to come and get the main character, maybe framing it with a little more room behind the actor's head might sell that we're expecting something to come into frame. These little things contribute to the film's feel and emotion. Number nine, lens choices. Yep, the lensing in your film is a character. It's an emotion, it's a feeling. Choosing lenses should be done where it is serving the visual and emotion of the film. Now, if you have a 1970s period piece, having a surgically sharp lens, well, it'll distract from the story. It's not how our brains are programmed to, well, look at the past. Lenses, and well, ultimately filters here, should all serve the story. If you have a nice modern sci-fi film, maybe some anamorphic lenses would help tell that story. Have a flashback in a dreamy rom-com? Well, maybe get a vintage set of lenses to well, help and convey that. And maybe a filter might help bring that dreaminess to the film. There's a lot to consider here. Number 10, color grade. This is the final visual mode for the film. Most and much of the look is set before shooting even starts. And well, talking with a colorist during the camera lens test, well, can really help make sure that the visual you had in your mind can be done as efficiently as possible. Colorists work their magic in the post-process and spend hours upon hours fixing every little lighting mistake and, well, using color to serve the story and the characters. Sometimes bringing out their faces, other times hiding the characters in the dark. Many times this is just done in post or is tweaked in post to really sell the idea. But that overall look and grade in the film, that's all finalized and realized by the colorist. 
Having a bad colorist can do a lot of damage to your story. Having an excellent colorist will just simply flat out save your butt many times over. Number 11, camera choice, finally. That's right, this is the last on my list. The camera absolutely is a character in the film, but skimping on any of one through 10 will show up before skimping on 11. Now I'm a camera guy, yeah, it feels wrong to say it, but it's true. Camera is not the most important thing in your film. It can enhance and bring life and support your film in a tremendous way. And a poor choice could negatively affect your film. For instance, if you are telling a modern sci-fi film and shoot with VHS, well, that visual is going to take a bad turn. But again, also having 8K full frame on your romantic comedy period set in, say, 1950, it's not gonna make your film better. Until one through 10 are addressed first, you, you don't need to worry about number 11. Now remember, all of these are supporting your story, which is always number one. And there are so many more parts, people, and things that can make your film the best. This is by all means not a complete and comprehensive list, but it's a mindset. It's a great place to start. What do you think of this order? What would you change? Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'd love to have a conversation about it. And remember to like, subscribe, support, join channel memberships, and all those good things. And as always, as I like to leave it, don't let your passions center around your life. Let your life center around your passions. Mm -hmm.